So you're ready to make your laser cut parts for your gripper. So what you're going to have is your full size gripper drawing, which might look like this. And what we want to do is we want to start drawing some of these parts. I'm going to show you how to draw some of these parts. I'm going to set this right there. And on the other side, I'm going to open up AutoCAD. And in the folder that we've been finding everything, the next one is called 05 Laser Gripper. When you open that, it's going to look something like this. And what we want to do is we want to draw this onto here. Now this I believe is 11 or 12 inches wide and 11 or 12 inches tall and what we're going to do is we're going to draw out these so this is big enough to hold most of my parts if I lay them out properly. The first thing I want to draw is this blue shape here. Now if you saw this shape it would be thicker than a piece of cardboard and because it's thicker than a piece of cardboard what I want to do is I actually want to draw a couple of them let's say it's a half inch tall I might need four or five pieces just like that and this is I can see here that it's about three squares wide and if I count down it's about nine squares tall okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and the grid on this is set up to the same scale as the grid on this each mark here is a quarter inch each mark here is a quarter inch and I'm gonna start not on the lines up at the top but I'm gonna start like one square in start with a line and I'm gonna draw four to there eight and one more and then down three over nine and up three and that right there is my blue piece that is right here I also want to put some holes in here so if you want the holes to be where they don't rotate I would suggest that you use 0.1 for those circles so right here I want this to rotate uh, in the blue but in the green I want it to be static so it doesn't rotate now I need to get this centered right but the grid is on so I can't find that center point so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and turn off the grid and now I can turn on midpoint snap draw a line across here let's draw another line with the grid on let's turn off the snap we're gonna draw a grid line from there to there and where those two cross that's where I want to draw a circle we're going to turn off the grid and turn on our snap and we want where those two cross right there I want to draw a diameter so I'm going to type D for diameter enter and then point two and that circle should be a little bit bigger and I want so I like that that's a great place for that circle but I want another one just on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Mirror. I'm going to select the circle I want to mirror. I'm going to right click, enter, or spacebar. I'm going to click on the midpoint of this and go to the midpoint of that. And so imagine a mirror was here. I want to press enter. And now I have two circles on this on opposite sides. Okay next thing I want to do is I want to copy that so I'm gonna to go to copy I'm gonna select my shape and I'm gonna copy them down now for this I'm gonna want the grid back on so I'm gonna come here to grid and I'll put one there 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 and there so that's five shapes and if we stack those up we'll have a nice piece here next I have this green shape well the green shape is a little bit longer we're gonna say it's 10 squares and it's still three wide so before I draw with a line now I'm going to use the rectangle tool so with the rectangle tool I can start here and I can draw over 10 squares and 
that makes it a little bit easier to do. So that's a trick you might want to use. Now, now that I have these circles kind of placed in good spots, I can go and I can copy that circle and copy it over. And I can copy this circle from here and copy that over to that corner. Now, if you recall, I said that in the green, I don't want those to rotate. So I want those to have a diameter of 0.1. Okay, so what I could do is I could either draw a circle from the center of where this circle is. I'm going to turn off my grid again. From the center, diameter, so I have to type D for diameter, and 0.1. So that smaller circle is that circle. So I, and then I can delete this. Or I can use this circle just to scale it down. So I can go to Scale. I can select the circle. Right-click then I want the center of the circle and I'm going to say 0 0.5. 0 0.5 will mean that it's half the size that it would have been. So then I hit enter and that makes that smaller. Now I have two of these green pieces and they're identical so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that and from the top corner here I'm going to move it down turn the grid back on just like that. Now you may notice I'm working with my snaps and my grids regularly as I'm working. The next thing I want to draw this handle. This handle is short because we need to fit it on a sheet of paper. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to make it longer. Okay, Pretty much the whole width of this page. Plus it's got this piece that's orange on here. When we make this with wood that'll definitely be a separate piece. But for this, I'm going to actually make a T-shaped piece that will be the handle plus this in cardboard. So I look here, this is one and a half inches, and then it, we're gonna make it pretty much the entire length of this sheet. And then from here to here, that looks like eight squares by one and a half inches wide. So let's go ahead and draw that line. I'm going to start near the edge. I'm gonna come over now, if I want to go to here with the entire object, I want to come back to here for that T shape. And I'm going to go up eight over one and a half inches. All right. And I'm going to just kind of end it kind of at a random spot there. Here, I'm going to draw my inch and a half down. And what I can do here is I can mirror that to get the opposite side. And from the center here, over, there it is. And then you saw that I only drew this halfway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase half of it. I'm going to pull this down. And so that's my handle with this orange piece. And so I'm going to move that down a bit so that I have room at the top for the last two pieces. Now this is on an angle so what I would do if I had my sheet of paper is I would take a ruler to it and I would measure how long it is. Now because it's on an angle I sort of have to estimate how long it is. I'm gonna say it's 24 squares. 24 squares is 6 inches. So I'm going to draw it six inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to go up maybe two inches. I'm going to come over maybe two and a half, down and over, something like that. And then I want an arc here. And so for the arc, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick arc and I'm going to pick the point where it starts a point where the middle of the arc is and the end of the arc. Just like that. And then I'm going to delete this line. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to move that further up on the sheet. Mirror this across here. We're going to move that a little more out here. And now I have all of my parts on one drawing. Um, 
the last thing I need to do is put some more circles into this. So I have a circle here on both the orange piece and the red piece. So let's go ahead and place those. I can copy the circles from here onto these shapes. So I'm going to copy the larger circles onto here and here and here and then I'm going to mirror this shape across to be on that and then the last step is I need a circle here okay well that one I think that would be a good one for the small circle so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I want that circle to be right around this area right somewhere in here so what I can do is I can just go and copy it and go from the center of this circle turn off the grid for now center of the circle to turn on the grid this point right here where those two grid lines cross and I want to make sure that I've got the same spot there now imagine if I had this drawing now the difference between these drawings is this drawing has these blue shapes that are very thin now the actual pieces that they make up they are not that thin this is the actual shape that uh, the student built off of that design and you can see that these pieces that were thin in the top view are actually about an inch and a half tall so I would take this length 10 long and I would make it an inch and a half wide so let's go to rectangle 10 long by an inch and a half wide and that would represent this piece right here and when we laser cut this it will be thin but tall now up until this point we've been using all red lines red lines are what are called cut lines and right here in the layers menu we have different types of lines that we can use raster is for when you want to use text it will the laser will cut it a very shallow and uh, but you'll be able to see the text that you're doing uh, you could also do this for maybe an image on various things um, so we're gonna try raster out I'm gonna go up to text I want single line text for this I'm gonna turn grid snap and I'm going to click my first point here and my second point over here and ask for the height of my text what I want is 0.25 for the height and I'm going to type in my name, all caps. Like that. I'm going to hit enter, enter, and there I have my name. Now, it looks a little stretched out, so what I can do is I can click on the text and I can shorten it. The next type of line we have is a engrave. An engrave it's similar to the raster it's not going to cut all the way through but with engrave we draw shapes so for example I could turn on my object snap or my uh, grid snap and I can draw a circle there this circle will be in the handle but it's not going to cut through the handle it's just going to draw a circle After you're finished, you're going to save it to your H drive and you're going to go to the T drive, teachers, Mr. Lilalco or Mr. Liggett, hand in folders, and then you're going to put it in the folder that Mr. Lauco or Mr. Liggett assigned to you.